Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the shiny only fire model type run of Fire Red Canto Complete. Last time, well, we really hit the ground running. We acquired four Pokemon Charmeleon, Eevee, Charmander, and Houndour. So, I was able to figure out what their hidden power types were as well. So, Agnes is Grass, Sparox is Fighting, Cautions is Ground, and Garmin's is Psychic. Also did a little more level grinding too. So this time we're going to fight the rival and make way to Viridian City. Before we do that though, we go up here, and there's an item. An Ultra Ball. Yeah, this game has a much uh, steeper curve than default. So, uh... Okay, here's blue, and uh... Yeah, as you can tell, his Pokémon are stronger than they are in Vanilla, but uh, that's true with everyone. The level curve is steeper. But to be fair, it isn't such a bad thing. Splash. Okay. I guess they must have changed some movesets, too, because Abra is not supposed to know that. All right, well, if you want to be that way, fine. Now, some of you, if, if you haven't been paying attention to the uh, rule set I've been using, may ask, well, why are you using both Charmeleon and Charmander? Because eventually you're going to end up with two Charizards, right? Well... Under my rule set, I'm allowed to have multiple Pokémon in the same evolutionary line, as long as, by the time I get to the Hall of Fame, they are at different stages. So, say, for example. Well, it also means that they can be at the same stage temporarily. Like, for example, both of... I can have two Charmeleon at once, but... well... Eventually, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little tongue-tied here. Basically, I can have two Charmeleon at once, but I have to evolve one of them in the Charizard before the end. But anyways, we're going to keep going, because, well... Now, you can see a bunch of trainers down here. You don't want to go this way. First, I'm going to show you this sign here. By the way, uh, yeah, that's not an idle threat. In fact, just for dem demonstrative purposes, I'm going to show you what they mean. Gotta run to the bushes, huh? Oh, you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah! They weren't kidding! So, don't do that. Back in an alternate timeline where I wasn't a dumbass, we proceeded to turn back as soon as I found that sign. And now, we are going to make our way out of here. Oh, and just a quick reminder, for those of you wondering how I got hidden power, well, the answer is that, well, Pickup has different move pool, well, it's a different item pool than in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Like Ruby and Sapphire, it's fixed, but in Fire Red and Leaf Green, it's mostly berries. Plus, rare candies, um, PowerPoint ups, and also, a, I think a couple different TMs. One of them is Hidden Power, which can be very, very useful, needless to say. It gives me coverage options I wouldn't otherwise have. It is a bit luck-based, but, well, that's the brakes. Anyways, as you can see, the, well, the old man ain't here. So let's keep going. Also, just a heads up, we're definitely going to need to do some more level grinding before we take on Brock. Because, well, his Pokémon are going to be in the high teens to around level 20-ish. And, uh, he has a type advantage. Oh, fuck you, Ratata! 
Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, bitch. Anyways, be right back. Now let's try that again, shall we? As you can see, there's a lot more grass. The route is differently structured. <laughs> Shroomish. I may end up catching one of those later on, because, well, you can use things like Flash, but actually, you no, know, Paris would be better for that. So here's Viridian Forest. And Viridian Forest in this looks a lot more like an actual forest in how it's laid out. It's not a fixed maze, it's... everything is spread out. Over here, we got a spell tag. This boosts the power of your ghost-type attacks. Oh, we got a shiny. What is it? Kakuna! No. Remember, the shiny encounter rates in this hack are greatly increased. I guarantee you that is not the last shiny Kakuna we're gonna find. It might even be the last one while I'm recording this episode. Anyways, uh, I'll skip ahead till something interesting happens. See? Told ya! Not the last one we'll find. And over here, we have a yellow flute. This cures your confusion and is reusable. As you would know from watching my Emerald Steel monotype. Put that there. Anyways, moving on. Oh, what do we get this time? A Weedle. Yeah, as you- as we've demonstrated. You run into a lot of shinies in this hack. If you like the shiny hunt, but you're frustrated with the odds of finding them, this is a good one for you. I'll actually be honest, I think the counter rate may be a little too high, but, well, that's just me. Oh yeah, and you can encounter the fossil Pokemon here too. Or at least some of them. We're actually gonna catch this one. I mean, yeah, we can't use it in this run for battling, but it might be useful as an HM slave. I'll call you Claw. Anyways, and we have our first bug catcher encounter. out. Or, oh right, it's bug type, so it's neutral. Good shit. go. Level up. Like I said, this game is suspiciously generous with some of the items you get. Which, in most ROM hacks, that usually means it's just gonna get very hard very fast. But so far, it's manageable. Moving on, and we're going to do another bug catcher. Unfortunately, he's now blocking the way up into there, but we'll see if that actually obstructs him in any way. Okay, yeah. Oh, they pick up items. Blah, blah, blah. 
I really lucked out on getting Grass Type Hidden Power, I'll say that much. Having something that's just a hard counter to my main weakness. I'm almost wondering if the game is trying to get me to lower my guard before it fucks me over later. Moving on. Uh, I guess we'll check that out later. Oh, no, we can go back there. Anything back here? Oh, Kabuto! Hmm. Nah. Nope, doesn't look like there's anything back here. There might be, but I don't have the item finder yet, so I can't tell. Alright. We can also go down here. And there's an item over here. White herb. White herbs are single use items that are called. Oh, yeah, they undo your uh, stat losses from using a move like, say, Overheat. And there's another place you can go to in this forest, but we're not there yet. Okay, I'm just gonna knock out a couple more Pokemon. And we're going to swap off of Garmer, because you're basically out of power points. You lucky egg. Oops. How bad? Rossberry. Um, yeah, the Rossberry I could just sell. Because I can't get burned. Same thing with the Spearberries. I can't be frozen. Because fire types. So those are just free money. They're like 10 coins a pop. Okay, and these two are going to be single battles only. Unlike an Emerald version, where if two trainers encounter you at the same time, it'll pretty much always be a double battle. That is not the case in Fire Red or Leaf Green. It's not like that unless they're programmed for that. Oh, I forgot to switch Pokemon. Give me a second. How embarrassing. Bebass. Oh, by the way, yeah, you can catch Feebass using the old rod in Viridian City. So, yeah, they actually made Feebass easy to get for once. And also, Milotic's pretty easy to get as well. There's a sign in the player's bedroom on the wall right by the stairs that tells you how all the evolutions are changed. This way you can get stuff that normally requires a trade evolution. Okay. I know I was using fire type attacks on a fee bass, but they use charm, so. And now we're getting a second Charmeleon. This one's going to stay a Charmeleon. As soon as I get the Neverstone, I'm gonna give it to it so it doesn't evolve further. Because the thing is, even as an intermediate stage, Charmeleon is one of the better fire types I'll have access to. That it looks like Agumon. I think that's awesome. So we're gonna go down here. First, we're gonna switch off. There's one more thing I want to show you guys. Okay, what do we find this time? Wormpole. Now this would be pretty exciting in uh, normally because well. You never know what you're gonna get. Are you gonna get a shiny Silcoon or a shiny Cascoon? Nah. That won't be the last we've encounter we'll encounter, I guarantee it. Another one. <laughs> yeah! A third shiny Kakuna. Like I said, shinies are not that uncommon in this hack. over here 
I wasn't talking about you! As I'll say before we were rudely interrupted, here's a rare candy. But that's not it. There's also this. This, I'm pretty sure, is where you can encounter a Celebi later on. If it's anything like, you know, Gen 2. Oh, and I want to make note of this particular shiny Pokémon because... My very first shiny Pokémon encounter was a shiny Caterpie back in Gold version. You know that story about how somebody won the bug catching contest with a Caterpie? In, uh, that an NPC tells you about Gold and Silver? Yeah, that's because, uh, that's because it was shiny. You can actually do that. If it's shiny, you're pretty much guaranteed to win. We're gonna call you. Hmm. We're call you Wiggler after the uh, enemy type in Super Mario Brothers. Back on the road again. Let's continue on our way to the exit. Also, quick reminder of why you saw that Safari Ball there. Well, again, you can get them at a shop in Viridian City, and they're basically a Great Ball that's less than half price, so... For your money, they're the most efficient balls you can buy. I recommend getting them in large quantities at the start of the game. Now we proceed on our way north. We arrive in Pewter City. We're gonna heal up, and then I'm gonna go back to Green Forest just to do a little bit more experience grinding. Also, it's rather convenient that we got that nugget from one of my Zigzagoon because here is a TM Mart. First, we're gonna sell that nugget. As for the other items I have, those are off the PC. Now, this is something I definitely want to use, Sunny Day. That'll boost my Fire-type attacks. Plus, if I get Solar Beam, that works with it, too. As for other TMs, well... Ooh. Uh, let me see. Hmm, Taunt, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Hyper Beam, Light Screen, Protect, Rain Dance, Giga Drain, Safeguard. Huh, not bad. What's this guy got? This guy's got Focus Punch. Shit. Dragon Claw. Decent. I actually might get that one. Water Pulse. Calm Mind. Yes! But first I need to make sure that a Pokemon I have can actually learn that. Roar. Toxic. Hail. Bulk Up. Yes! Bullet Seed. And Hidden Power. I can get those for free, so there's no point. Give me a second. Okay, so none of the Pokémon I have now can learn Calm Mind or Bulk Up. We're gonna get Dragon Claw. And we're gonna teach that to one of my Charmeleon. As for Sunny Day, well, we'll have to see. I think Agni's gonna be the main attacking Charizard. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a Charizard eventually, but it's gonna be the main. It's gonna be an attacker, whereas uh, Kaujin is probably gonna be a little more support based. Dragon Claw, Sunny Day. That'll come in handy. In fact. Maybe we should give it to... Hmm, let me think. We'll give it to Houndour. I was considering giving it to Eevee, because, well... Flareon is, unfortunately, not very good, but most of its attacks are going to be... most. Its most effective attacks are all physical anyway. So, uh, it won't really be able to benefit from it. Anyways, I just want to show you guys something real quick inside of the, uh, Peter City Museum. So, of course, this is supposed to be a diorama of a space shuttle, or 
Actually, I believe in the original, it was supposed to be an actual space shuttle. Specifically, it was the Space Shuttle Columbia. Uh, you'll just say they got rid of that in the remakes after what happened to the actual Space Shuttle Columbia. And now, let's proceed to the gym. So, this may be a bit challenging, because, of course, the level curve is steeper. Nose pass. Okay. Yeah, nose pass would be a little tanky. Reduce hidden power, which on Svarog is fighting type. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be helpful. Okay, definitely want to take you out now before you can build a speed. <clears throat> Plus, I think it adds a higher power than tackle. A crit? Wow. Uh, of course, it dropped my defense. Uh, let's try Tackle, see what it does. Nope, Tackle is a little more powerful. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take the hit no matter what. Might as well eat it. Ah! Uh, never mind, no. No, it was I hit first. I thought, I thought I missed. Okay. Wow, I must have some very high defense. I mean, yes, I'm over-leveled, but it should be doing more damage than that. Or is it just whoopers that bad? I'm not sure. There you go. Jupiter. So close. Okay, you need to go down before you can speed up. You would. And there's the first gym trainer down. Defeated him, and I'm gonna go heal real quick. Now we're back. Gym trainer number two. Ah, oh, Forest from the anime. If I recall correctly, in, was it Pokemon Chronicles? Or something like that? Where Forrest ends up taking over as the gym leader while Brock's off in the Hoenn region with Ash? Uh, okay, we're gonna switch. Let's try Dragon Claw. Yeah, Dragon Claw is high power and it's going to be neutral to most types, but it'll also give me an edge against Dragon types, so that's just a good utility move for me to have. Oh, and to special attack in this generation. All Dragon type attacks are. There are hacks for Gen 3 that add the physical special split. Liquid Crystal comes to mind, but this isn't one of them as far as I'm aware. I should, should probably have used Hidden Power, but, eh. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Okay, now I'm using Hidden Power for sure. Oh, 
Come on. We'll see about that, kiddo. Now time for the main event. We'll see about that, kiddo. Yeah, I'm not doing a ton of damage to him because Onyx's only good stat is its physical defense, but he's not doing much damage to me either. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we need to take care of that real quick. Thankfully, that also means I picked up a lot of berries thanks to my Zigzagoon. In fact, I'm probably going to end up boxing a portion of my team at a given time just so I can have more Pokemon using pickup. And I'll bring out the full team for stuff like gym battles and rocket hideout, things like that. I'll just rotate the rest of my team. To the whoa! Okay, that hurt a bit more. I think after this, I'm gonna have to swap out. Down you go. All right. Now you may wonder, why do I have the uh, set battle style set and not shift? even though it would give me an advantage? Well, the answer is, I want to make it a little more challenging on myself, I guess. Plus, it's faster. Plus, it kind of puts you on equal footing with the AI in that regard. The AI can't switch while I'm switching Pokemon. They can use items, so I can use items, but I can't switch when they switch. Simple as that. Lily. Okay, well that's not gonna help you, because you're also a grass type. Okay, maybe it was more effective than I thought of. Alright, Dragon Claw then. Leechy Berry, okay. Should, should I use a... Maybe I should use Metal Claw. I don't know if the Grass type will allow to resist. We'll see. No, that's what I should have been doing at the start. Metal Claw. And there goes the battle! This should be Rock Tomb? Yeah. All right, anyways, moving on. And that's gonna wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a pretty long one. Um, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page. Next time, we're gonna be making our way to and probably through Mount Moon. I'll see you all next time.